William Simpson. I'm curator at the Williamson Art Gallery and Museum in Birkenhead in the UK. And this is the first in a series of films that we're making that are to look at the collections of the Williamson Art Gallery and Royal Museums uh, in a little more depth and to make them accessible to people while we're closed to the public, which we are at the moment during the uh, uh, COVID crisis. The painting that I've chosen uh, for this first talk is one of a large oil painting of Christopher Columbus. Uh, Columbus has been very much in the news in 2020, uh, particularly in recent weeks where statues have been coming down um, and his legacy as the European discoverer in the late Middle Ages um, uh, of the Americas um, and the effect it had on indigenous peoples in particular uh, has very much been called into question. The artist of this uh, painting is a gentleman called Emanuel Lurzer, who was born in 1816 in Württemberg, which is in Germany. Uh, and as a small child, he and his family moved to Philadelphia, uh, and that's where he grew up. He became an itinerant portrait painter, uh, moving around America, uh, went back to Philadelphia in 1839, and then returned to Europe, travelled around Europe, settled in Dusseldorf, um, because he wanted to train and to uh, experience the subject paintings that were being done there, uh, where high Victorian subjects, history subjects and religious subjects were considered really the most important part of, um, of history. Lurtz's name is best known uh, in the United States as the painter of what was has become an iconic image um, in American history, uh, which is Washington crossing the Delaware in the uh, Metropolitan Museum in New York. Um, again, this large oil painting with Washington standing in the prow of a small boat uh, crossing a river on uh, Christmas Day in 1776. Uh, and uh, he's being rowed across and uh, ice flows are being parted. Um, and this was a, a, a key moment in the American War of Independence. Uh, and Lurzer has encapsulated it in such a way um, that uh, the image resonates and uh, is, is, is so well known in the United States um, that I bet there is hardly a person who doesn't recognise uh, the image. Columbus um, was a, an important part of American history um, and Lurzer, having, been gro having grown up in America, and he felt American, he felt that America was part of his soul uh, and the democracy um, that it represented. Uh, and, and the connection between Europe and uh, America was represented by Columbus. So he did a number of subject paintings of Columbus from both before the um, discovery of the voyages in 1492 and afterwards uh, one of the most famous certainly in the 19th century was one called Columbus in Chains um, which is uh, part of the the Columbus story uh, when Columbus was um, challenged as governor of Hispaniola uh, because he, he ran uh, a very uh, brutal uh, regime there um, and he was taken back to Spain in chains to be tried. Um, and uh, the King of Spain funded the next uh, voyage, his fourth and last uh, voyage across the Atlantic. Uh, so when he got back to Spain, it wasn't taken terribly seriously. But at the time, uh, it was obviously an important part, and it's an important part of the Columbus myth, if you like. Um, and this painting was used in 1892, which was the 400th anniversary of the um, uh, of the uh, voyage to discover America. Um, it was used in the series of Colombian stamps that showed various elements of the Columbus story uh, on the $2 stamp. So, to come to our painting properly, uh, the painting shows Columbus standing in the prow of the Santa Maria, pointing west, looking hopeful, looking prophetic, uh, looking... Uh, towering above everybody else uh, and and it is a very sort of portentous and um, uh, a figure that has great gravitas uh, it's a, a sunrise looking hopeful 
looking west, um, looking for the new world, looking for new money, uh, looking for new lands, uh, and um, everything about it shows the, the, the hope that was vested in Columbus at, at that time. One of the most interesting things um, is that, in fact, this is the second version of the subject uh, that Lertzer painted. He painted a version while he was still living in Dusseldorf in 1855. Uh, this is a picture which is in private hands. It went through uh, Christie's sale room uh, within the last 10 years. Um, and uh, it's exactly the same size as our painting. It's just it's a landscape uh, format instead of a portrait format. Um, and what we see uh, is exactly the same scene. Um, and the uh, figures are um, the figures are very, very similar. Uh, this was 1855, as was painted in 1865. Uh, Columbus is standing in an identical pose, looking portentous, pointing west, uh, while he's saying farewell to his son, who's hanging off his, uh, his right arm. Um, and part of the the myth, if you like, of Columbus was that um, by bringing European civilization, bringing Christianity to the Americas, uh, he was um, improving uh, the world. Um, so that's something that's called into question these days. Hence, uh, the priests who are bidding him farewell um, are an important part of the composition. And the two priests uh, are in almost identical poses in the two paintings. Uh, on the one side, there's a young gentleman in a red hat who's a very similar figure. But in fact, the other figures have been reversed. So there's an old, older lady with a child um, and there's a gentleman with a, a sort of casket with documents in. Uh, and they've been swapped over uh, between the two paintings. But Lurzer was very good with his training uh, in Germany, in particular at catching nuance, catching character, um, and the individual faces um, show great, uh, um, uh, great penetration uh, and great uh, concentration um, on the way he's telling the story, because telling the story is what uh, what it was all about. Um, now the painting was in. Uh, say our painting was painted in 1865 um, and uh, only a year after it was painted 1866 it was transferred from London uh, from New York uh, to London and um, the reason for that I've got a rare variety of documents about it but one of the reasons for that was that the gentleman who consigned it, who was a gentleman called Darby, who ran the Darby Gallery uh, in Broadway in New York, uh, he said that um, basically he sent it to London to uh, to sell it um, because, he, and he, as is quoted from a letter of him, there being but few people in this country that have both the taste and the money for works of such value. Now, 1866, of course, was very shortly after the close of the American Civil War. Um, and um, there's a great deal of talk in the, uh, the documents I've got about the value of it as being uh, $1,000 in gold. Because in the wake of the uh, Civil War, the uh, American economy um, was volatile uh, and paper money wasn't trusted. Um, so the fact that it was $1,000 in gold was very important. It was consigned uh, by the Inman Line in March 1866 to be sent to Henry Graves in Pall Mall in London. Henry Graves was a print seller and a major uh, picture dealer really in London uh, in the hope uh, of gaining a sale. But part of the reason why we have so much correspondence uh, is that the packing case uh, was damaged en route. Um, and uh, so hence the value of it was extremely important. Um, the damage to the painting uh, was a, there's a gash across the centre, which we assume uh, is the result of that. Uh, it could do with a bit better conservation than is on it at the moment. Um, but that must have compromised the sale possibilities uh, of the painting. Uh, 
and exactly how many hands it went through uh, we can't tell because we haven't done the research I'm afraid um, to find that out. It came into our collection in 1925 uh, from the family of Thomas John who lived in a house called Thorncote in Rock Ferry uh, in near, next to Birkenhead um, who died in 1925 and it was given to us by his daughters. He was an insurance broker uh, and had a substantial house and a substantial fortune. So uh, it came into the Williamson Art Gallery collection in 1925. Um, it's had uh, minor conservation, as a surface cleaning and things since then. Um, but it sat in our collection and not really been noticed very much, to be honest. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be able to bring it to the fore uh, and um, uh, and expose it to the world, if you like. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, and we will be doing some more, possibly shorter talks, uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.